fuel accounts and a few other factors which we have been uh, stressing and highlighting time and again in the public domain as well as in our interaction with the banks and NBFCs. Now, overall, I would again like to stress that our banking and the NBFC sector, that is the financial sector, remains healthy, resilient, and stable. NBFCs in particular have registered an impressive growth over the last few years. This has resulted in more credit flow to remote and underserved segments, bolstering financial inclusion. While the overall NBFC sector remains healthy, let me re-emphasize, while the overall NBFC sector remains healthy, I have a few messages to certain outliers. First, it is observed that some NBFCs are aggressively pursuing growth without building up sustainable business practices and risk management frameworks, which should be commensurate with the scale and complexity of their portfolio. An imprudent, an imprudent growth at any cost approach would be counterproductive for their own health. Second, driven by significant accretion to their capital from both domestic and overseas sources, and sometimes under pressure from their investors, some NBFCs, including microfinance institutions and housing finance companies, are chasing excessive returns on their equity. While such pursuits are in the domain of the boards and managements of NBFCs, concerns arise when interest rates charged by them become usurious and get combined with unreasonably high processing fees and frivolous penalties. These practices are sometimes further accentuated by what appears to be a push effect as business targets drive retail credit growth rather than its actual demand. I am not generalizing it for the whole NBFC sector. There are certain NBFCs where it is happening. Bilaterally, we are engaged with them, but I think this is a, major, this is a message which uh, it's important not only for these outliers to keep in mind, but I think this should act as a guidance for the entire sector. Now, the consequent high cost when I'm, that is, I was talking about the push effect, that is business targets driving retail growth rather than its actual demand. In that context, I would like to say that the consequent high cost and high indebtedness could pose financial stability risks if not addressed by these NBFCs in time. Third, NBFCs may review their prevailing compensation practices, variable pay, and incentive structures some of which appear to be pure, purely target-driven in certain NBFCs. Such practices may result in adverse work culture and poor customer service. To sum up, it is important that NBFCs, including MFIs and housing finance companies, follow sustainable business goals, a compliance-first culture, a strong risk management framework, a strict adherence to fair practices code, and a sincere approach to customer grievances. The Reserve Bank is closely monitoring these areas and will not hesitate to take appropriate action, action if necessary. Self-correction by NBFCs would, however, be the desired option. Coming to external sector, India's current account deficit, that is CAD, widened to 1.1% of GDP in the first quarter of this financial year, that is 24-25, and this was on account of higher trade deficit. Buoyancy in services exports and strong remittance receipts are expected to keep the current account deficit within the sustainable level. On the external financing side, foreign portfolio investment, that is FPI flows, have seen a turnaround from the net outflows of 4.2 billion US dollars in April and May this year. They have turned from net outflows. In April and May, we had net outflow of 4.2 billion US dollars. Now, they have now turned to net inflows of 19.2 billion US dollars during June to October, and this is the figure till 7th of October. Foreign direct investment.